is this what you really want? Or do you want companionship, friendship, love? They became feminized. They didn't take initiative. They're not initiators, protectors, or providers. And on the other hand, we see many women that are masculine. It is much easier to have fun for, for a night or for a week with someone, a stranger, an absolute stranger, instead of trying to build a connection. Welcome to another episode of the Dating Beyond Borders podcast. So today I'm excited to feature a neuroscientist from Cyprus who weaves the wisdom of Greek legends into understanding how our brain functions, offering new insight into managing stress and the intricacies of relationships. He's a health and relationship coach and hosts his own podcast called We Are Health Pod. Today I have him here to talk specifically about love and relationships in the modern world. So welcome to the show, Dr. Stephanus Yanu. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure being here. And definitely relationships is something that every person loves. And that is why we're human at the end of the day, to build long lasting connections with others. Yes, I agree. I believe that dating and finding love is becoming more and more tricky. Let's dive right into the deep end of it <laughs> and work our way through it. Tell me, what is the biggest issue do you think with, you know, with, with dating nowadays, with finding that commitment? Mm -hmm. One thing that it's in my awareness right now is that people are more willing to share their physical existence than exposing their soul. And unless there's a soul connection, it is very difficult for someone to build a long lasting connection by just sharing their body. Instead of people beginning a relationship or a friendship by communicating, by sharing vulnerably, they are immediately jumping into physical intimacy, which cripples the longevity of any relationship. And why do you think that is? Why are we jumping into, and by physical relationship, you mean that we're having sex uh, exactly. very early. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's, um, I think it takes a very brave soul to share parts of their, their vulnerabilities, their soul, because the soul is eternal. Whereas subconsciously, we know that the flesh eventually is going to leave us. But the soul is something that we we carry. And by carrying our soul and exposing this wider spectrum of who we are, our trauma, our childhood upbringing, our dreams for the future, we might be afraid that we might people might mock us, people might make fun of us. And governed by our own childhood wounds or our shadows, we do not want to make that connection. It is much easier to have fun for a, for a night or for a week with someone, a stranger, an absolute stranger, instead of trying to build a connection and actually be curious about who is sitting opposite me. I think that also the, the media culture, the technology has inflicted such a big wound in society nowadays from the perfect image of uh, social media to fast dating of uh, Tinder, in which individuals are jumping from one relationship to the other without sitting with themselves to realize, what has brought me here where I am today? What were the flaws that have led me to choose this individual to go out on a date? So there are all these kind of things that kind of ignite our insecurities. And on the other hand, there is such a plethora of partners that are available, plus we tend to idealize partners. We want the individual with the perfect body or the perfect job. So we're not dealing with anyone that is mediocre at the end of the day, because what makes us special is our soul, not so much our physical existence going back to what we've discussed initially. Interesting. So there are a few things happening nowadays. I mean, there is a huge rise in anxiety. I feel it's maybe that prevalence of choice that 
we, you know, it's been said that humans, I think the optimal amount of choice is six, I think. And after that, where we feel like um, that, that sense of, oh, I'm losing the other options if I choose this option. Do you think that's part of the things that's happening today with the Tinder culture? Like, we feel like we're constantly looking for the best of the best of the best, and we just can't settle on anything because it has to be that best. And we get crippled by just the amount of choice we have available. I think it's so mesmerized by the shell of an individual. And if you see Tinder accounts, and I have some of my clients that are quite successful on Tinder, the way that they market themselves. So most men that are going to have most of the choices out there in terms of women are going to be individuals that rank between 8 to 10 in terms of physical appearance. But what about the guy that it's like a five or a six, but he has a pleasant personality and he's uh, really witty with his humor and he's really intelligent. That guy doesn't really stand a chance on Tinder. And Tinder is not the platform for him to exhibit his personality or, or what he has to offer to the opposite sex. Having said that, I, I see that also at least, and now speaking about the Greek culture, yes, mm -hmm. um, and especially in Cyprus, that we're a very small island and more or less everyone knows each other. Women are very hesitant to put themselves on Tinder. And those that do are those that are really have no expectations, but they are going to go out on a date and they will fulfill their physical needs. But they're not really there to to make a long-lasting relationship. And also men, on the other hand, they think that, okay, if it, and we're talking about the Greeks again, yeah, because we're very traditional. Um, they're saying that, okay, if she's on Tinder, it means that she's doing this regularly. So I don't want a car that has 100,000 miles. I want a car that has 100 miles. So if she's on Tinder, it means that she's she's been around. Mm, I see. So, so this is more or less how how we think here in terms of of Tinder. Mm, interesting. So it's still that uh, kind of um, well, I would say conservative mentality in terms of dating. So yes. uh, it's the Madonna whore. Uh, so it's 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 either she's the woman I'm going to marry or it's the woman I'm going to sleep with. And if mm -hmm. she's been around the block too many times, she's not the one that I want to get serious with. It's still like that, but most women do not understand that I can turn this around. Because if you know really what you're looking for and who you are, you will not sleep with even an amazing guy on the first date. And that also neurochemically in terms of neuroscience keeps the dopamine levels of a man up. So he keeps the chase. It puts him in, into this hunter warrior archetype in which, okay, she's not easy. I'm going to chase her. And even if I'm a, an eight or a 10 and I've tried the same tricks and these tricks do not work with her, then I will slowly start trusting her. Because if I cannot get into her pants, it means that also other men won't be able to do so that easily. Because I know my game and I'm a player and I know how to flirt, but whatever I try, it's not my amazing physique. It's not my uh, the way I flirt. It's what I have inside of me, my inner child. And this puts a lot of pressure, I would say, on women because women also have needs. And unless they truly want a guy, they need to understand that if I put them hurdles, some barriers in front of him, then first of all, I will, understand, I will understand if he's truly interested in me. Yes, I didn't kiss him. I didn't sleep with him on the first date. Why not send him a message the next day? Maybe I rejected him. And you know, men are very insecure. They think, okay, if she rejected me, it means that she doesn't like me. It means that she might still be interested in her ex. So why should I waste my time with a woman that I gave her attention, but she's not willing to give me her body? And this is the commodity, basically, exchange between a man and a woman. You give me your body, I will give you attention. But what if I 
don't want to play that game and I want a, a long lasting connection with you, then I have to play the long game. Then I have to truly to truly be vulnerable and truly share with you um, the need of my inner child that wants to be loved, that wants to feel safe with you, that I don't want to be, I'm not one of the ordinary because we're all special. As long as we go into the date with the right intention. And if we know that, okay, I'm going to date this guy because I might win a friend or I might have casual sex with him, but that doesn't, doesn't guarantee that I will also see him the next day. Because if you give it to me on the plate on the first date, then I will lose my interest. And everyone does because dopamine starts going down. Yeah. I try not to overgeneralize over here, but I'm trying kind of to mend our culture with also brain chemistry. Yeah, I find it really interesting because, you know, what I do is I look at different cultures. And of course, when we're talking about a Cypriot culture and we're talking about the Greek culture, it's still quite an alpha male uh, culture where uh, the man is still prepared to, let's say, chase the woman, you know, to try to, to seduce the woman and to try to get her into bed. And so he enjoys the chase. Um, I look, take a look at more equal societies like Scandinavia, for example, where it's very common for women to go to bed with a man on the first date and to oftentimes just kick the man out and say, okay, this was what I actually came for. So she's taking on that role. And I've seen men from more conservative societies like you know, Mexicans go to uh, Sweden and be very confused by this and say to me, actually, I I actually didn't enjoy it very much. It <laughs> almost seemed like all the beauty of the seduction was gone right out of that. So she's the one that bought me a beer. She's the one that took me home. She's the one that kicked me out. And I just, it didn't feel right to me. So I thought I wanted to have sex, but actually... I miss the whole game or the whole, the whole, the, the dance that comes before the having sex part. Like the, having sex is, I mean, it's, it's an important part, but it's, it's, it's that, you know, getting to that part that mm. oftentimes I feel like men really crave. And I feel like potentially they also miss that nowadays where it's become very easy and the challenge has gone. You no longer have to work as hard to get the woman's number, to call her and potentially get rejected. Um, the, that that process has been made so so easy that it's kind of like the initiation process you know where in african tribes they jump through fire and they jump on the backs of goats and 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 it's 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 what it takes to become a man we are we're skipping that part women are making it so easy and i'm not against that i do feel as you said women have their own desires and and we we want it just as much as men however i feel like that's made for a very lazy society in general where nobody has to lift a finger anymore and so men are uh because they're not putting that uh you know that 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 uh, that work into it they're now not valuing the process of dating as much yes you yes you've touched upon some very crucial points when it comes to men culture because i see nowadays that men became First of all, they became entitled. They think that, oh, a woman is going to come and speak to me. I'm not going to go to speak to her. And why shouldn't I text her on Instagram? And I tell guys like in their 20s, 30s, you stand much higher chances if you just break the ice with a woman in your circle, give her a compliment. I write something for her on a, on a napkin joke with her about her shoes or find something you know just just grasp the opportunity to kind of break the eyes it could be about her coffee about her clothes about her hair just tell her how beautiful she is and then text her on instagram because you've built the physical connection don't go immediately through instagram or through her socials to to text her and men did become lazy um i i i don't know how this kind of became lately, this was not because I'm 37 years old. So I've lived the, the actual physical flirting, but I see youngsters nowadays 
texting each other through socials and liking stories and this and that or putting you in the the close friend circle so that uh, you know you're a close friend and you can only watch some more intimate moments of my life for me this is bullshit <laughs> for me this this doesn't doesn't work this this kills me for for my uh, my let's say age group we enjoyed more the the adrenaline of the hunt it was not so much about sleeping with a woman yes that was was great if it if it was going to happen but it was the adrenaline of the chase the you would play with the eyes you would learn how to dance you would you would even practice your chat up lines and greeks are phenomenal when it comes to their chat up lines i'm not speaking about cypriots per se i'm speaking about greeks they're i don't know it's like their tongue is dripping honey and i see the same thing uh, with more or less with italians they they appreciate the feminine they will give a compliment and they will give a compliment without expecting anything in return the italians not the greeks but um <laughs> so it's it's something beautiful you know women are are like life they gave birth to us they gave birth to men we all had our first food from our mother's breast so why do we stop when did we stop giving them that level of appreciation and admiration as men and men have become very very feminized i compare myself to my father many times and i'm thinking this guy used to work i don't know how many hours per day right he would go home and he would also have sex with my mother and and i'm like i work more or less similar hours but i'm drained by the end of the day so this type of men they were com they were built completely differently than us of course stressors and financial pressures nowadays are much bigger and you see a lot of men a lot of greek men living with their mothers with their fathers in their in their family home and this is also one of the reasons why most men are late in getting married so if you are feeling still like a child living with your mother and your father because of the financial pressure of course you want to have a family of course you want to support and provide for your partner but by living with your parents it puts you into this infantile state into this childlike state in which you have other people providing for you it could be the basics it could be the electricity the food on the table but still that doesn't give you the the initiative for life and a woman wants to see initiative in you she doesn't want to see a passive man because sorry for saying this but when shit hits the fan you cannot turn to your wife and tell her, oh shit, what are we gonna do right now she's gonna tell you aren't you the man of the house and what are you gonna tell her i've always been the child in my family so please can you be my mother it doesn't work like this and this is also why we see a lot of a big rate of divorces there is a lot of pressure of, on men because they became feminized they didn't take initiative in their life they're not initiators protectors or providers and on the other hand we see many women that are masculine masculine and both of these aspects relate to paternal wounds because of the long hours of absence of the father from the house because the father in the house provides safety and a model for a man to imprint on but if the father is absent in a in his daughter's life then the daughter for her to feel safe she will accumulate masculine characteristics to fill i fill in the gap that is missing from her father so we see feminine men and we also see masculine women nowadays and in a relationship we are we should at least we should try and get rid of that armor if we're women the masculine armor and as men we need to have power over land and over our own self
Yeah. So these are, are some things that I think kind of have shifted, at least in the Greek culture, the last uh, 20 years. Yeah, that is very interesting uh, because, and, and I find with, I don't know how it is in the Greek culture, but I find that oftentimes it's with women that are 35 plus that they, that they've been single for so long or they've been hurt so much that they take on a lot more masculine characteristics and they start saying, I don't need a man. They put a lot of barriers and they become almost, I would say <laughs> bitter and angry as well, but it comes as, as the shield of I don't need a man. I've never needed a man. I'm going to be fine on my own. And I see this as well with, you know, men and women in general. It's like they there's a bit of hate in between the sexes nowadays. I mean, men oftentimes, and I see this with the comments I get on the videos where men will oftentimes say uh, without reason that this woman has high mileage. If she said she's had two boyfriends in her life and that often obviously women are just looking for money and nothing else so they're all gold diggers and i think it's because we're fed these um these visuals on tiktok that that divide us so much uh oftentimes the most controversial posts will go viral i can see this from my own work and uh if a woman says i want a man who makes a million k a, a year uh that's going to get a lot of comments and that's going to get all the traction and of course that's what men see before they've even stepped foot on a date you know maybe they haven't even had any dating experience that's the woman they see and women they you know they see the other end of that is that oh men they, you know they're lazy pigs who don't want to commit and so um we're building this divide uh, which i find is is quite scary because at least in north america i also feel that there is a um, there's a bit of a hypocritical nature as well, where women will say I'm a feminist, uh, but yet I want the man to pay a lot of money for me, but yet I don't need them. And so it's this kind of, well, okay, if you're a feminist, then you can act like a feminist, but if you want the men to pay for you, that doesn't necessarily make you a feminist. Uh, and it's just, it's a lot of very contradictory messages that we're getting nowadays which is confusing people even more and people are just checking out they don't want to date because they're not as you said you know the, the, we're not meeting each other face to face i'm in the same boat as you i'm you know my let's say mid-30s and uh i've gone through that where uh you know you you'll meet someone on the street and you remember the first time you met this person and there wasn't a pressure for you to go on a date and ask each other you know it was just it was just very organic and very natural and because you only met that one person in a month you focus on that one person because you're not going to meet a ton of people you know you're just going to meet this one person and so you obviously your brain is not all over the place and you you're just going to focus you're going to your intention is 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 just that and i and i think with men i mean it, it was obviously the same you're going to meet that one woman you're going to put a lot of work into getting that one woman and so that woman becomes very valuable in your eyes because we value what we work for essentially right. so um there was a lot that i just unpacked there but what do you think about this okay so um very 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 crucial points there so from one point of you we have andrew tate right and um he's definitely gonna leave a legacy this guy now what i can tell you is the following the system the way it has been designed it does not allow a woman to be a woman and a man to be a man because now both sexes work right yes in the past in let's say let's let's speak about our mothers or our grandmothers and grandfathers yes now women used to be responsible for the household and raising children and i'm saying this and i know that this will attract a lot of attention but but this is the blueprint of a woman this is is, is what every woman kind of subconsciously wants she wants to be served and men need to serve a woman need to provide everything for her and that's not the only role of a woman because from both sexes a woman is more clever and this has been scientifically proven because most of her cortex is much larger it builds faster than any man and in fact men are less cognitively powerful than a woman. 
So whenever this comes up into a conversation about with feminists, and I tell them this, they're like, oh, what do you think that women are just only to raise uh, children and be at home? I'm not saying that. It depends on you. What do you want? Now, a man, on the other hand, at the age of 22, 20, when he finishes university, he has no chance competing with a woman cognitively. Most women are going to get the A stars or the, the perfect grades. So, of course, if I have a business as a man, of course, I'm going to choose a woman. And I'm going to choose a woman because she's going to create less conflict in my business because she's she's going to be, you know, she knows how to navigate socially better and she won't have that, you know, that attitude of a man. I want to prove. I want to show. I want to do. Of course, I will choose a woman. And then you have men kind of figuring out their life path by the age of 30. So we also see a lot of of men nowadays kind of being depressed because of what go, goes on right now. Money is very little to support a young couple unless they both work. And then you have the pop culture that advertises sugar daddies. So you're going to be 20, 22 years old and you want a guy in his 50s. How normal is that? Because a guy in his 50s that has his money, that has his business, maybe has children or not, he will not see you as part of his legacy. He will just see you as an added bonus, as an extension, as a toy. Mm -hmm. So a man will never respect a woman that is going to be, I don't know, his toy or his younger daughter. A man will respect a woman that will stand by his side in difficult times. So that, and, and that also have a, has a threshold, yes. We're not saying that stick by his side forever and ever de despite whatever you might be going through. But if you build your dreams together and your life together, and this is where vasopressin comes, another chemical inside the couple. So when we solve problems together as male and female, then we bond longer. But this sugar daddy culture or this feminist culture that I want, I'm, I'm able. Yes, you're able. And yes, I wish for every man to provide for their wife, for their girlfriend, everything that the woman needs. But sometimes this is not possible. And on the other spectrum, I have women that are super masculine in my office as my clients. They make a lot of money. And the only thing that they're asking for is... I want a man that makes his own money, can support himself, and he loves me. Mm. On the other hand, I have women that make ridiculous amount of money, and they want a guy that makes more than them. So they're targeting like 0.5% of the world. And I'm telling, I'm telling her, like, you're limiting your chances to 0.5%. Is this what you really want? Or do you want companionship, friendship, love? Uh, what exactly, intimacy, what exactly do you want in your life? You want money? Money's, money is, yes, it's mean to happiness and it's going to amplify your good or bad characteristics. But happiness in a couple doesn't necessarily revolve around money. If you have the basics, it could be a walk on the beach. It could be a coffee. It could be, you know, a barbecue with some friends. We all love luxury. I love luxury. But I know that even if I have a Ferrari and I don't have the right person to share it with, that car is empty. It's empty of love because one can come one day, then he leaves or she leaves, whatever, and then I'm still alone. No one is truly seeing me for my inner child that wants to be loved. And that's the person that every person should strive for who can love me as I am with my flaws. And together we can figure out life together. You can help me 
feeling parts of myself that are empty or help me love parts of myself that I cannot love because through your eyes, I can also love myself. And this is what ultimately a divine relationship looks like. I, I feel like uh, we are very superficial nowadays with our checklist of things that someone should have. And what's interesting to me is that you said this woman, you know, let's say she makes so much money and yet she's looking for a man who makes more money than her, which doesn't make much sense because money used to be because women didn't have the access to earn money. So they were looking for someone to support them. Now, if you make that much money and you're looking for someone to have more money, what is the purpose of it all? Is that, that she, these kind of women, they, they don't want to feel more masculine than the man or is that they feel like they can have it all um, because I'm starting to see the second one. I can have it all. I can have a yes. very rich man that spoils me. He's going to be good looking. He's going to be six foot two, full head of hair, like all that and more. And I hear this from women. I don't want to, you know, bad mouth women of my age, but you have to be a little a tiny bit you have to be a bit realistic that you're gonna have to let some things go because as you said a man who has money he's gonna then use you more as a trophy i mean if you have that much money are you gonna take uh th this beautiful woman are you gonna take her seriously or is it just more gonna be i'm a 50 year old man now i really want to play around i'll get a 25 year old but essentially, you're not really going to be a partner, an equal partner, because he has the money. He's doing all these nice things for you. But yeah, there, there is a bit of a sense that I think for men as well, I think they did a poll. They asked men, uh, would you rather date someone out of your league or I think it was, I'm not sure if it was below or, and, and the men, uh, like all kinds of men said, we are way above my league for sure. Like every single man he, he wanted to, you know, so we're, I feel like maybe in our society, we feel like we can have it all and we don't want to compromise. We don't want to have to work for things. We don't want to have to make any changes in our life. It should just come very easily to us that we're going to have this partner who is great looking makes enough money and there's going to be passion for years to come mm -hmm. so which is very very interesting to me because that's not how our parents and grandparents did it obviously many of them made too many sacrifices so it wasn't always healthy uh, but at the same time they knew how to make a relationship work yes yes, yes. now all what we see today is also part of the porn culture which was an unsolicited experiment right you see these amazing women well not all of them some of them and these amazing men and you you're like oh i want exactly the same thing in bed but that to what actually happens in real life there are two different things you build you can build to that level yes but that is not what you're gonna get on the first date because that level of safety, that level of safety doesn't come from the first date. It comes throughout the years. And uh, the older generation, you know, they, they, they were there and they were bonding through problems, through goals, through dreams. We are lazy. The younger generation is lazy. Yes, dream. And also they're afraid to dream. They want everything ready. So basically what you want, because you're suffering from your own paternal trauma, you want basically another father that is going to love you as his daughter. And all these shadows and all this trauma that we were carrying. And we spoke about my client that makes so much money, right? This client comes from divorced parents. She never knew her father. So she had to rise to the top to feel safe because she saw her mom going through hardships. And a lot of people that rise to the top, whether they're men or women, they rise to the top because of their trauma. They're not born and they're charismatic and they are studious or disciplined. No the level of trauma that you need to have to rise to the top and be known. And I can challenge anyone hearing this 
this podcast, if they were willing to lose a child, be beaten up, be humiliated, to rise to the top, thank you very much. I'd rather be simple Stefanos from Cyprus, you know, having goats around his, uh, his, his house over here, than rising to the top and be known. Because I know where happiness lies. And my happiness is within my home, within myself, with the very simple stuff that I do on a daily basis. And yes, yes, of course, I will try and be known. But even if that doesn't come, I'm still happy. A lot of men and a lot of women, we have trust issues. And if we don't tell them, you know what, I do not trust you. I do not trust men. Help me trust you. Show me how to trust men. Show me how to trust women. We cannot have a long-lasting relationship. This was or did not really exist in the past. And yes, our mothers and fathers have been through a lot of hardship, something that a lot of young parents wouldn't do today. They wouldn't beat up their kids. They wouldn't leave them starving. They, they are trying to always be present, which is also another shadow that has caused many men to be feminized. And we're talking about the, the phenomenon of the domesticated man. Mm -hmm. What is the phenomenon of the dom domesticated man? Tell so the, the domesticated man is a guy that has, did not have his father around growing up, and as a result, when he's working over time, he feels guilty. He wants to be close to his family, and he accumulates a lot of negative emotions. He tries to please his wife. He tries to please his kids, and there is this split inside of him. Do I belong at work, or do I belong at home? Because my father sacrificed me for the sake of money, and many men nowadays are wondering, where do my values lie? Do they lie with my family or do they lie with the system, with money? And how can I make my money consciously and not sacrifice my masculinity and also my family? There is so much awareness right now, what we hear in regards to how you should raise your kids the trauma that you could inflict on them. And men and women are becoming so conscious that this puts extra pressure in within the relationship. Yeah. Um, speaking of, I mean, you've mentioned before that uh, Greeks are getting married later. Uh, yeah. I saw statistics about that and I was actually quite surprised because you assume knowing another you know, good culture is quite conservative, very family oriented. You would assume that people get married quite early, but actually it was in the the statistics. I think it was it was quite high. I think it was it was a 36 for men and 35 for women, something along those lines. It was um, very surprising to me. Do you think it's because men uh, do you think it's because of the financial factor? Is it because you know, men live at home for much longer with their parents and so they don't want to move out and ride into the house of a woman, essentially? Um, one reason is, is financial, yes. But also, on the other hand, is personal characteristics of mm -hmm. the younger culture. We've been spoon-fed. And because we have such huge family bonds, we're so attached to our mother as Greeks, that when it comes to having a family, with the first on the first hurdle, on the first obstacle that we will face in our relationship, we're gonna run away because we're gonna find the next partner to continue. And during this path, we are inflicting a lot of pain because we do not sit in difficult times. Because there's so many options, and yes, there's a lot of cheating going on, I suppose, everywhere in the world right now. But when you're squeezed in your marriage, right, it could be financial, it could be a good father, a good partner, it could be your intimacy levels might have dropped, 
and your partner is telling you, do something about it. Immediately, you're getting criticized. This could relate to your childhood upbringing. Wait a minute, my mother used to criticize me. My father used to criticize me. Well, it means I'm not good enough for you. Then instead of sitting with yourself and working on yourself to become better, you say, okay, let's get a divorce. I want out. As soon as things become a little bit difficult, then it's easy for a man or a woman to run away from the relationship because they do not want to put work on themselves because this is going to be really painful to realize your trauma and your own shadows. And I've been there. And I've been there and I understand how it feels when you're confronted with the truth. But that's the way we grow. That's the way we grow as humans. And in any relationship, we need to look for completion. To find parts of ourselves that are missing. To be able to call ourselves a man, a woman. It's a big word. It's a big word. You don't call yourself a man because you have the genitals. You call yourself a man based on the actions, based on the difficult things that you do in your life. Mm -hmm. Like our Greek mythology, our Greek ancestors. Yeah, that's very interesting. I do think that people are forgetting that when we are in a partner, partnered relationship, uh, there's just so much work that we need to put into that. And we can't just say, this is not working, so I'm out. Obviously, there are things that might be very, very difficult to deal with. But I feel like nowadays, could it be also because there is no aim in getting married anymore? And when you're not married, you always have a bit of that one foot out the door feeling because essentially you can't just leave. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not proposing marriage to everybody because I know that it can have crippling effects on people that are trying to divorce as well. It can take years and you lose half of, uh, half of your money. But I also think that when you have that choice, that we are partners, but we don't have any legal bonds mm -hmm. and we don't have children and we're just living together, then if something goes wrong, if we're not maybe as excited or passionate five years down the road, which as we know, it's quite reasonable because passion doesn't last that long, <laughs> we're out. What do you think about this? Well, my my opinion about marriage is that it's it's like a business contract at the end of the day but because of the fall of religion ethics and values in society the only thing that we kind of have nowadays to kind of keep people accountable it's law so maybe marriage needs to exist because how can I know if the values of the other person are right? If what I'm spending, if what we're buying together, yeah, okay, this could be <coughs> dissolved later on in, um, in court, let's say. But maybe on the other hand, people are like, okay, let's stay together and uh, it doesn't matter if we get married or not. But I believe that at least the ceremony the ceremony of marriage, it doesn't have to be recognized by the state. It could be just a ceremony. And it is a very sacred. This is something very, very sacred. And you don't do it for the sake of doing it because you want to do it. You need to feel it to do it. Now, a lot of men, before they propose, they're seeing all this crap on social media in which, how am I going to propose? Is it going to be on the Eiffel Tower? Is it going to be on the beach? This, this puts nonsense pressure on a guy. If you want to propose, just propose. It could be, if you don't have the money to buy a ring, get a, a ring from a can. Make it on your by yourself. If the person loves you, they can, that's going to be your vow to your partner. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know, but for me, women are 
very pure beings, very innocent. They believe in fantasy. They want to believe in the, in the fairy tales. And as men, we need to give them that fairy tale as long as we keep also our words. Don't just put empty words in their heads and then they're expecting that and then you allow them to fall from the heaven. So be genuine, you know, in any relationship, you have to be, be vulnerable. Now, why people choose not to get married nowadays? I don't think that is necessary for me. It's not necessary, but at least it puts a little bit of, of more pressure into, into their marriage. For us in Greek culture, we invite uncles, aunties. We have a big group. We have a big wedding. We have big gatherings. So if you fail, it's in the, in the, in the public eye as well. <laughs> if, if your marriage fails. So you kind of think twice. Not always, but you might think, like, what are people going to say? Oh, I failed. Or... I'm a failure like, I don't know, my uncle, my father, my mother. So it really depends. Yeah. Yeah, it's always interesting to hear that in the Greek society. I mean, there's a big, there's a big focus on weddings in general. I mean, marriage and celebration around the marriage. I like what you said about the ceremony because I think there's something beautiful about someone choosing you. Not just choosing you for an X amount of time, but to say, you know what? You're the person that I want to be with. But that's a big commitment for people to make nowadays to say, oh, I, I do. Do I really? Am I really, really sure? Am I 100% sure? So um, when I have all these other potential options that I see in front of me, when we're talking about Greece, I still would have hoped or not hoped necessarily, but I would have expected that people would still get married. But looking at the numbers, it's... Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting how fast things are changing. It's shocking. It's shocking, actually. Um, there is a lot of lack of trust between genders nowadays. There's a lot of lack of trust. There are so many wounds. People are hesitant in, in going to therapy to heal from their trauma, to recognize the toxic patterns in themselves and also in others. So therapy in Greece is not a big thing. We're now catching up with uh, the rest of the world. And uh, we're trying to put our voice out there to help people. Some visionaries, some, some people that they like, um, fairy tales, like me. We're trying to tell people, you know, love exists. And love is a beautiful thing. And the union between a man and a woman, it's got energy. It's something that, Maybe you felt before in the when you're an infant in the in the arms of your mother. What if I could tell you that you could possibly give that to your partner and your partner could give you that? What is the number one issue that people usually come to you with? You work with do you work with couples or do you work with people? I work with couples. I work with um I work on self-development, but I'm also, I'm also, I see a lot of people in regards to stress, anxiety, and depression. Mm -hmm. Most people come to me because of lack of communication. They don't communicate effectively. And the, the biggest issue is whenever they have a fight, like a big fight, they don't understand that what I am, the reason why I, get, I got so hurt from you was not because of what happened, this small thing, but because somewhere along my upbringing from my previous relationships, I got hurt. So you're just giving your partner a trigger and all the old trauma comes on the surface and then she attacks you or he attacks you. And this communication, because people whenever they have a fight, they don't understand that it has nothing really to do with the incident. It has everything to do with the inner wounded child. 
And as soon as they recognize that, oh, and, and they can take a third person perspective on the, on the issue, then they can start working in solving the problem, in, in mending the communication with their partner. And occasionally, you will find women that I might, might tell you, oh, you didn't tell me that you had your ex on, uh, on social media, right? I had this guy that lied to his partner about having his sex on, on social media. And the reason why he lied was because he wanted to keep the ideal image that his partner had in her head. So he never done anything with her. He never cheated. But the fact that he was not a man enough to tell her, honestly, yes, I still have my ex on social media, but we don't talk or communicate, this was a big trigger for her because it went back to her father that was cheating on her mother. It, was, it went back to her old boyfriend that was lying to her. So... It's accumulating. Trauma, if you don't heal the trauma, it gets transferred, gets transferred. And the way that we communicate, sometimes it comes out very abruptly. It doesn't it come. It can explode, right? Clearly. Bottle yes. it up and, yeah. Boom. I think that's a wonderful way to end the podcast. It was very, very interesting to talk to you and to see, you know, dating and relationships from a completely different angle. And, you know, also the way you kind of weaved in the Greek mythology into it. For anybody that's enjoyed the podcast, please go and check out Stefano's Instagram and also his podcast where he talks about more of this in depth. Thank you, my love. It has been a pleasure chatting with you and thank you so much for all the wisdom that you have shared with me. Thank you. I'm very happy that you enjoyed the wisdom that I've shared as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. And uh, stay tuned for next week's podcast where we feature another country. Thank you, Stephanie.